Hey guys, what's going on? It's Jake Campbell and Jim Brown and Monica Diaz in the background. She'll be joining us here in a second. Um, thank you guys for joining us. Hey y'all! Health and Vitality Secrets for the Busy Professional. It looks like we got a bunch of people that are going to be watching. Um, it's always a time delay, so I never know who's here and who isn't. So again, thank you guys for for jumping on. Um, Jim, what's going on, buddy? Nothing. Just got uh, got off the treadmill. <laughs> so. Nice. Maintaining the uh, sore physique, correct? Trying to, yeah. <laughs> there is no try. Do or do not. Right. Right. What's going on with you, Monica Diaz? Living life. Living life with the beautiful, handsome, hot Jay Campbell. Sorry, guys. I have peanut butter in my mouth right now. I just ate one of those perfect food bars. Um, all right. So let's just jump into some of the topics I guess we're going to have today. I know Dr. Osborne is going to call up as he normally does. Uh, Ray is not going to be on the call. He's living large with all the celebrities. Yep. So, um, so yeah. So real quick, guys, for the folks that are going to be watching, um, this is our last hangout before we actually go live with our event, which is um, actually two weeks from today, uh, February third. Or actually, yeah, February fourth is when we launch on Thursday. But February third is when everyone will be traveling into uh, West Palm Beach and uh, Fort Lauderdale and Jupiter Beach, Florida. That area, I guess, people will be flying into different airports. Um, and, um, you know, we're going to have our seminar over three days. It's going to be pretty intensive. Uh, for anybody that's still interested in coming, we're, we really do have a couple of positions still available. There's actually two um, slots still left. Um, technically, it's going to be Thursday starting at, uh, I guess, 8 o'clock in the morning and all the way running until 10 o'clock at night. And the days are broken up. You can see the itinerary on our schedule on the site. It's, again, it's SOAR, S-O-A-R, forever.com. But half the day, people will be working with Dr. Osborne, and the other half of the day, they'll be working with myself, Jim, Monica, Ray, and, um, and Melissa in the gym, going over mobility, going over specific sports training, working out um, how to contract muscle fibers. Basically, all the things that most people have absolutely no idea what they're doing when they go to the gym, we're going to be working on um, to ensure that everybody learns that stuff. And then, of course, at, the night, at night, on both days, Thursday and Friday night, we'll be having lectures. Uh, on Thursday night, myself and Dr. Osborne will be giving a lecture on anti-aging and hormonal optimization. And then on Friday night, um, Jim and Ray and Monica will be doing work, uh, lectures on mobility and Navy SEAL and uh, like kind of the winner's mindset. So both nights, action-packed, power-packed with information, tons of information we're going to be learning. It's a lot of hands-on stuff. Uh, and then, of course, um, you, if mo most of the people, some of the people that are coming are already patients of Dr. Osborne, but for the people that are new, uh, they will also be uh, clinically evaluated by Dr. Brett and, uh, and evaluated for, uh, you know, potential uh, regenerative uh, medicine and hormonal optimization. So again, over two days on Saturday, we finish it up in the morning. Ray does his Navy SEAL training on the, on the beach. Um, it's from literally at the crack of dawn from about six until about eight 30, right? It's fun. And um, yeah, it's really, really awesome. It's uh, for any person. It's not like intense, like where you have to be a Navy SEAL to, uh, to qualify or, or, or to compete or anything like that. It just kind of shows you, um, you know, the type, the type of teamwork and camaraderie and cooperation, you know, in a, in a community type aspect that's necessary to get through that type of stuff. So anyway, it's all awesome stuff. And then we'll be finalizing um, on Saturday night at the Woods restaurant, which is Tiger Woods' restaurant um, with kind of an award ceremony in a final Q and a with all the SOAR team members. So that's it for SOAR. Um, again, there's still, still two spots left. If you're interested in coming, you know, a lot of people that are around the world right now, it's going to be probably too late for you to fly in. But if you are local um, to South Florida in that area, Miami, West Palm, whatever, and you're interested, um, even if you just want to come over for the day, we do have um, uh, different packages so that you could just come for the lecture and the seminar during the day and not have to worry about spending the night or any of that stuff. Just reach out to any of us or, again, go to soarforever.com and uh, fill out a registration form. Yep. Anything you want to add? It's gonna, honestly, there's nothing like it. That's all I want to say. I mean, it's one of those things that you're going to have to show up and, be, and participate in to actually understand and experience exactly what it is because there's nothing like it. That's all I have to say. Okay, cool. Jim, did you want to add anything about some of the stuff you're going to be doing at SOAR? I think you pretty much covered it. You know, so, uh, phone again today. Echo on your phone, or uh, is your phone on the table, or no, no phone on the table. Whatever it is, um, yeah. So I'll be working with people on the mobility, trying to you know show show how to use some of the mobility tools like the Voodoo wraps and 
um, you know, kind of a modified foam roller that I have, uh, whatever tools we can find in the gym. But, um, you know, should be should have time to work with everybody from, you know, ank to, ankle to neck and uh, go through and, and see if we can identify any issues and uh, help you guys developability program, some things for that uh, you can work on and take home. Hopefully that'll improve your life. And uh, then anything with the training, you know, we'll go over all the different lifts or any issues that you have or, you know, variations that you want to explore and, and have somebody take a look at. Awesome. So, um, yeah, so just real quick on Jim. Um, so Jim helps all of us guys, you know, so if you are coming, I mean, he can, you know, diagnose and assess like if you have an injured area or a focal point on your body that produces pain or soreness or stuff like that, he's awesome at diagnosing that kind of stuff. He works on Dr. Osborne and myself. Um, but just real quick, we've got a bunch of people watching right now on the side. Um, let me just ask you guys to go over to what is basically called the Q and a section. Um, you should be able to see it now. I just activated it. If any of you guys have questions, um, just go ahead and just type them over on the right hand margin, um, from where you're watching, if you're inside Gmail or you're on YouTube. So again, uh, feel free to send us questions. So some of the topics that we're going to talk about today, um, I'll let Monica start. Our dog is actually going crazy in the background <laughs> and I'm literally about to go kick him across the street. Um, the first topic is actually creating lasting productive health habits. You want to jump jump in there and start? <laughs> I was gonna have Evan. Yeah, hold on one second. No, go ahead. I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead. Um, productive health habits. It's setting a schedule. Set yourself a schedule that's gonna work for you. Now, you know, you have some people that are gonna want to work out in the morning. Then, obviously, train in the morning and create a plan that works for you. Meal prep, like today we had our office um, meeting and it was awesome because our team leader, who's actually like our manager, he makes crock pot chicken, he puts it all together with sweet potatoes, he plans his meals. So everything is scheduled in so that that way you create success and you make it easier for you. I mean, us being busy professionals, we've got to plan our lives. We've got to, otherwise, you know, you could, you could end up saying, oh, I'm going to just go through the drive through at Taco Bell, which is what I used to do. So plan it. And you know, if you have if you have your training schedule and you do it in the afternoons, then make sure you're doing it in the afternoons. And you guys, please do train. Don't do that to yourself. Do, set up a schedule that's going to work for you and do it appropriately. Like we train three days a week, and at the most, it's like an hour. And sometimes if we have a lot of people training with us, it can go a little longer because you know you have a lot of people working in on sets. But we're very effective and efficient at what we do because we've got to get in and out. And our goals are to plan and, you know, we have business goals, we have physical goals, we have all these different goals. And if we're not boom, 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 then everything gets thrown to the side. Yeah. And, and, and real quick, um, Jim, you can jump in here in a second. Guys, knowledge is power in life. If we haven't said it a million times, again, we're biased. This is Brett's book. Of course, this is my book. You know, Jim helped me write this book, the testosterone replacement therapy manual. But if you're a guy and you're in your 20s, 30s, 40s, and you're serious about your health, and you want to understand how to source issues that may or may not arise as you age, you have got to read both of these books. I mean, these books are going to give you hacks, insider tips, secrets, however you want to refer to them, on, on how to live a very clean, healthy, productive life. I mean, I, I don't need to stress that anymore. You know, I get, I get tired, you know, Jim does too, of people emailing us, you know, asking for things that are covered in the books. You know, it's like Brett says, you know, when Brett takes on the anti patient, the first thing that he says to them is like, listen, both of you, both of us can help each other by you becoming very incredibly informed and, and you know, knowledgeable about the materials that are in both of these books. Okay. So again, the only thing I can stress so much at this point is literally you have to take your health into your own hands. Okay. You can't be in today's society, in modern day society, you cannot be thinking that, you know, you're going to leave your health to your doctors because, you know, even if your doctor's great and, and, and there are great doctors out there, obviously, but you've got to take control of your health. You have to understand your blood panels. You have to understand what's going on with you. These are the type of things that you have to personalize and take control of for yourself. Otherwise, you're leaving, you know, your quote unquote physical and medical care or health care into the hands of somebody that it's not really their job to, you know, to own it. You know, the only person that can own their health is yourself. Anything you want to add, Jim? Um, I kind of lost my train of thought, but uh, meal prep, you you, <laughs> you got to make your food. I literally haven't left the house for work 
know, since they started leaving the house for work without food, probably, uh, you know, or late 90s when I didn't have a store. So always, uh, to Monica's point, if you don't, you're going to end up eating something that you really don't want to eat. So you have to have food with you. you got to. And you know what's what's sad too, Jim? So like we had a, we had an office meeting today at, at work, and obviously we're in real estate. You have you have like title companies, you have um, like vendors that will bring in food, and people will come to the meetings to get free food, right? Well, the free food is not good for you food, but people will sit there, wait in line, and eat that food because that's the free food. So look, if you truly truly want to get into better shape, health, whatever you want to call it. Plan your meals and make sure you take it. We had our meals with us and we ate our own meals and we didn't even eat that food and it was free. Right. Yeah, it was garbage and it was like pasta or something. But yeah, it's true. And I mean, you know, we've talked about this before, but it, you know, it stands to it's good to be reiterated right here and that, you know, a lot of people complain they don't have time to meal prep or prepare their food or whatever. Well, guess what? You can hire a college student or somebody you know, who will work for, you know, eight to $10 an hour, depending on where you live, you know, to make your meals for you. It takes one time, you know, obviously you have to have the ingredients, but it takes one time you working with them and demonstrating exactly what you want done. And then you setting them up in your calendar or your schedule so that they come over every Sunday afternoon or every Sunday night or whatever, whatever it is that you want to prepare your meals for the week. And that's what they do. You know, not only are you helping out the economy, helping out, you know, a friend or somebody, you know, in your network, you know, um, but you're also doing something, you're, you're kind of outsourcing or leveraging, you know, your time because obviously your time is valuable um, for somebody that's going to do a good deed for you. And, and again, the, the most important thing about food prep is that it, it allows you to not deviate, you know, from a clean diet, you know, and the number one problem that most people have is, you know, as Jim already said, is like leaving your house without food. Well, guess what? You know, we live in a modern day society of stress. We live in a modern day society where you know, things go haywire. We have to address needs. Life happens, as I call it, you know. And so if you don't have your food on you, you're going to eat like shit. You know, you're going to eat some snack. You're going to go through some fast food joint, something, and it's just going to derail you. And the real truth is, is that this lifestyle, being lean, losing body fat, being quote unquote healthy is all a product of consistency. This is things, these are things that you have to do over your life. It's, you know, I always say fitness, health is not a hobby. Okay. It's not, it's a lifestyle. And until you embrace, you know, the things that you do from meal prep, from going to the gym consistently, from doing weight training or anaerobic, you know, or uh, uh, cardiovascular, you know, fitness training until you embrace those things and make them a part of your regular day to day life. Well, you know, you're not going to look or feel the way that, you know, people like us look and feel. And, and anyone can look like this, right? I mean, there's there's no exception to the rule, regardless of your genetics, regardless of your insulin sensitivity, regardless of you know how many carbohydrates you can eat or any of that stuff. You can look any way you want to with work and focus. Right. And uh, to piggyback on what Jay's saying, um, just real quick, is those people that are control freaks and that say, well, nobody could do it as good as I do, stop, delegate let go of your right and your need to control the situation and just allow somebody to help you to make your life easier. There's nothing wrong. Hey, Jeff, Jeff. Asking for help. hey Brad, Dr. what's up, brother? Oh. How are you? I'm good. How are you guys? Good. I'm good. We don't have Ray. Jim's here. Me and Monica are here. What's going on? No, everything is, uh, everything's good. Just moving along and uh, just getting, um, you know, getting ready to go. You, you know, like, with you um, like you're leaning out a little bit. Yeah, look, I'm leaning out a little bit. Not much. Not much. You know, it starts. Uh, it started. It started this week a little bit. So we'll see what happens. <laughs> mm -hmm. We'll see. That's we'll see. That's Jay's awesome. intensely yeah, yeah. focused. Jay is like Mister Intensely, Intensely focused. Right now. Wait, yeah, you're way better than I am. I'm like eating carbs and things. Oh uh, like no, well, I have to. I don't have Monica's genetics, so it doesn't matter. But um, anyway, we were just talking about like productive health habits. Um, you know, consistency, meal plan. You know, planning your meals. Prep right. your meals if you can. Um, anything you want to add in? Just you know, we're talking about health habits, like you know how, how important that having productive habits are. Yeah, I mean it, it's all about um, you know becoming habituated to you know you, you become habituated to health is what you want to do. So um, you have to. Uh, I think a big thing with with that, um, you know, particularly in the context of staying lean, is to make sure that um, you are. Geez, it looks dark here. I don't know if anybody can see me. No, you're good. You look good. You're like. 
The light's okay? No, it's yeah. actually it's worse yeah, now. No, now it's worse. Yeah, turn it off. There you go. There you're you good. Go. Perfect. You're good. Anyway, um, what I was saying is, you know, particularly in the context of, of, of leanness and maintaining your insulin sensitivity, um, uh, you know, which, which is obviously uh, conducive to longevity just in general, um, is figuring out sort of where your set point is um, based upon how much, um, you know, lean body mass you have, how much you think you can sort of tolerate, get away with. Um, you know, check your A1C levels. Um, check, buy a glucometer, check your check your fasting sugars, um, and then really become habituated to that to that set point um, based upon your goals. And I you know I suspect uh, that the majority of the people out there don't want to be um, fat slobs um, for a variety of reasons, and that they want to you know maintain um, leanness. They don't have to maintain three percent body fat, which is quite hard to do, drug free anyway. Um, but um, you know, in that regard, I think it's very very important to at least um, establish your your set point, and then. Um, uh, once you have that sort of dialed in, become habituated to eating um, in that manner, which will keep you that lean, which will keep your hemoglobin A1C um, uh, where it should be. Um, you know, it's not one of these things where you can hop on and hop off the, the, the train, so to speak, unless you're really, really, really diligent. Bodybuilders do it. Um, that's their profession. From the standpoint of that's not practical for the average, um, you, you know, for the average Joe. Um, you know, we need to, it's not our profession, our, our profession though to some degree um, is, you know, is you, well it should be, your health should be prioritized and it should be uh, to some degree your profession, although you're not be, being paid for it, the majority of us. Right. Um, so you have to sort of set these habits up and you have to set them up early, you have to be um, um, always taking a look, you know, check, in, you know, check your labs, modify, check your labs, modify, um, see where you are, check your, you know, see how lean you are. Um, you know, and, and, and become habituated to that, to, you know, based upon your goals. Um, so it, it's, um, it's just like anything else. It's just like, um, you know, developing, um, you know, good study habits when you're in school. And, you know, this should just be uh, something that unfortunately is not ingrained into our children's health um, at a very, very early age, but it really should be. You know, so it's like developing study habits. They should actually teach them, um, aside from the, you know, the one hour, you know, the one credit, you know, uh, every, every three years of, you know, of health. Um, this is something that actually should be as important um, as any other subject in schools and right. it's really a that's really a um, um, something that really is um, you know, strikes a chord with me you know because I, I, I I've, I've spoken to people about it etc cetera, etc cetera, and it's just very 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 much underplayed right. um, but those habits start you know at, at an early age they really really do you shouldn't um, you know become habituated to eating right um, after you um, after you're in the emergency room with your first stroke huh. right. it's a bad 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 plan you right. know um, so you know you have to. It, it, it takes willpower, it takes diligence, it takes practice, um, but it's um, it, it's it's you know it should be uh, you know of of critical and paramount importance um, to everybody at an early age. It's just nowadays it's so underplayed because of um, it's a cultural thing. I think. You right. Know? Yeah. I mean, I mean, the only the thing I would add, you know, before you jumped on, I I said, you know, knowledge is power. You know, I showed him my book and your book, and I said, you know, first off, like, you know, if you're going to work with a patient, those are the two books you give them. Read these books. And then when I start talking to you in, you know, esoteric, what seemingly are esoteric terms to you, they won't be because you have knowledge, right? I mean, I mean, the yeah. truth is, it's just like you said, Brett, is like our school systems, especially, you know, in the parochial, you know, one through eight levels, whatever they classify those nowadays, there's no real education in health, okay? And then you get into high school, and unless you choose an elective, maybe your junior or senior year, and we, and we both know that that's basic at best anyway from a nutritional standpoint, the only way people know is to be voracious and self-taught. You know, they have to seek this knowledge that's out right. on their own. That's right. That's right. Um, and it really shouldn't. Jay, I like, the, I like the, uh, the stuff that's framed in the back, by the way. That's cool. You got all your articles framed? <laughs> yeah, that's great. Oh, I haven't. I haven't. I haven't uh, no, I think you should, and, and rightfully so. I um. I, what do you call it? I think that I'm looking at them. Um, I have them sort of, you know, uh, uh, partitioned away from the rest of my book, so I don't destroy them. Because uh, you know, I will destroy them. <laughs> uh, but I, I, I have to do that too. Yeah, well done. But yeah, you know, you're ex you're exactly right, and it, it mortifies me. I mean, you know, with my kids, um, you know, looking at their um, you know, their curriculum and stuff like that. You know, they and they do have it, you know, to some degree in school. Um, I, I think that their their sort of health is is sort of under the same guise as um, you know, sex ed, so that they don't the kids don't get into trouble, get themselves into trouble. Right. Um, but other than that, it's really, 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 really um, downplayed. I mean, it's the same thing, and I talk a little bit about this in the book. Um, you know, where did the um, not that this is the best program, but at least it was some sort of barometer of of of, um, of an individual's um, fitness, strength, etc. Where did the um, you know, the presidential fitness awards go? Those are gone. Yeah. 
I don't know where they are. Jim, do you know where they are? Yeah, they went away with uh, our kids can't compete. Everybody. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, they went away. Yeah. Everybody gets a trophy. Mm-hmm. Give them mm-hmm. a trophy. He gets a trophy. Oh, hey, no. Everybody's a winner. Yep, yep, no, yep, 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 yep. No, I mean it's 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 uh, it's it's awful, and um, you know it's just like the same thing. You know we have the we have the same exact thing in 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 uh, in neurosurgery. Um, when I was in residency, probably in my f- maybe my fifth or sixth year, um, it was something um, uh, that came sort of uh, through legislature. I'm sure you guys are aware of the Libby Zion verdict. Anyway, um, it, 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 what basically the upshot of the entire thing was that the residents. Uh, where the residency programs were at fault because they were overworking the residents. So, you know, during my first, second, third, fourth year, um, you know, we were working 120-hour weeks. Um, then this verdict, um, you know, came down, came through the legislature um, because, unfortunately, uh, somebody somebody had died and, um, you know, uh, somebody was in a, in a position of power. I forget how it was. I forget the whole sort of, um, you know, exchange. But um, somebody was... was um, uh, connected with one of the senators, et cetera, et cetera. Here, here goes, you know, the next thing you know, we have this um, this um, this mandatory 80-hour 80, 80 work week. Um, and, you know, the junior residents used to say to me, you know, when I was a seventh-year resident, I'm going home because, you know, I had a case, I'm going home, it's, it's 8 o'clock at night, um, your shit's hitting the fan, and I'm going home because, um, well, I've met my 80 hours, and, um, you know, I, I, I don't want to I don't want to be in violation of the law. I used to say to them, well, that's fine. We have a patient to take care of, and you know what? I didn't have any of those 80 hour work restrictions and you know my experience is thousands of hours more than yours. I you know it'll end up you know coming back to haunt you. As it turns out, they did a um, a long term um, sort of retrospective uh, study look back. This was published about I don't know maybe a year or two ago in, in the Journal of Neurosurgery. Um, and the quality of the um, of the attendings, I think they used um, more surgical morbidity, et cetera, et cetera, for people that were recently out of the residency versus the ones that were out, you know, like when I was out, you know, or before. Um, and I graduated in 2003. Um, and they're worse. And it's the exact same thing. Um, you know, if you don't, um, you know, if you don't, uh, you know, get the experience early, early on, um, you know, I'm talking about in the context of health, if you don't have, um, you know, these barometers set, you know, which, which motivate people to be stronger, to eat better, so that they can meet, so that they can get, the, you know, the presidential fitness award, et cetera, et cetera. Um, you got a problem because, like you said, Jay, it, you know, then you're starting to do this after the fact, and it, that is not the time to do it. it no. it's, the time to do it is when you're early, you know, early. It's already early. done by that point. Yeah. It is. You yeah. know, those habits are set, you know. I mean, Monica, you know a lot about this stuff. I mean, it's it's about pattern behavior, right. um, and, and we just – you know, we let these kids loose. Um, they're certainly not going to eat well in college, unless you're talking about people that are in the bodybuilding scene, et cetera, et cetera. Right. Fine, yeah. but the majority of them are not. Um, mm. And you, you look at you look at um, you know obesity, and it is on the rise. Um, and I don't know what's going to end up uh, turning the tides and actually reversing that um, that cycle. I don't know. I mean, maybe we'll ultimately come to reliance, heavy reliance on drugs like metformin to protect ourselves from ourselves. Right. Um, <laughs> Right, yeah. it's true, and and better drugs. Um, you know, initially these will be oral hypoglycemics and 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 metabolic um, uh, activators like metformin. But you hear talk about people um, saying that uh, uh, they're going to develop this, um, you know, this gene. So uh, this gene, this um, you know, it's a it's a um, a, g- a genetic um, you know modulator or it's an it's, yeah it's, CRISPR it's, CRISPR right. You hear all sorts of things. You know, oh this guy's got you know a, a myostatin antagonist. Well, that's <laughs> not a way to that's not a way to do it. I no. mean, it's, it's really, really not. Um, you know, it's like uh, you know we were talking about this the other day. Um, you know, you drink the keep, you know, the the oral ketones, the beta hydroxybutyrate. Well, it's good, um, but people are actually believing that that's going to get them into ketosis when you right. haven't done the requisite caloric re- um, uh, carbohydrate restriction that will right. actually change your metabolism over. Now, I have a different stance on them since I've done a lot of research and fiddled around with them. But um, you know, they do suppress your appetite, as we talked about. So that's a right. little tweak. But um, it's certainly not going to do the work for you. And, you know, nowadays where everybody is entitled and everybody wants something done for them, n- nobody's willing to work for things, you've got a problem, I mean, with, with, yeah. with, with, with eating, you know, um, and, and, and proper eating and proper exercise, et cetera, et cetera. Nobody's willing to do anything. More gyms, more gyms than ever. People are fatter than ever. Yep. Go for it. Yeah. Yeah, I've always said, I think I've said this before, Jim and I have talked about this a million times, but – I've always thought about like doing a mockumentary, like you know, a Bill Maher like religious, you know, and doing yep. one like on gym culture and how in the last 15 years, you know, gyms have become ubiquitous everywhere on every street corner. There's four. What am I talking about? There's four in every major city. There's four gyms on every two corners, 
and but the American waistline and the person has gotten fatter and more obese and in and, and, and poorer health. So you're right. There's like this inverse nature. But I want to jump into the next topic, and it all kind of leads into this one. Um, the, so the next topic is self-talk and, you know, um, like how to use it to your advantage. And I'll, I'll kind of set it up, and I'll let Monica jump in, and then we can all kind of chime in. But um, I, I think this happens with women more than anything. Um, you know, women are obviously today, they're really, really dialed into what they see on Facebook or in social media and, you know, what's the quote-unquote healthy fit image of a woman. And if a woman isn't quote-unquote healthy and fit relative to what the image that she's constantly being exposed and bombarded with on Facebook or wherever she's at, Twitter, who knows, doesn't matter. Um, they, 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 as Monica always says, they, they create self-talk. And, and the self-talk is not positive. And, you know, the reality is, as is, is we all say and continually harp on and harp on, again, it's a lifestyle. It's not a fad. It's not a six-day you know, too fast. It's not, you know, three weeks and you're going to drop four bathing suit sizes. I mean, this is a lifestyle. So you want to jump in there real quick on that? Yeah, I think, I think number one, what I would say is comparison is the thief of all joy. So whenever you're looking at someone, and I did this back in the days, I would look at someone, oh, God, I wish I could look like that. How come they can look so good and I look like this? And I'm not going to be able to look like them. They have hips, they have a butt. You know, I'm not, that. I'm not genetically set up that way. And so I think first of all is just to not compare yourself to other people and, and want to be, yeah, you can have goals and aspirations so that this it'd be great to, to get close to that. But set your set realistic goals for yourself. And then on top of that, like many times what I've noticed is like we'll look at ourselves like, you know, I'm getting older and I can sit there and look at myself and point out all the flaws in my skin. Oh god, I got a wrinkle or oh god, I have this, or instead of why don't I just Oh my God, I love that my skin feels soft. I love, there's so many things that you can do to create success and, and wins for yourself. Why not do that? Why not make it fun? Look, we're all living in this skin, this skin we're living in throughout this lifetime here. So why not create patterns and discussions within your head because your mind's always going? Why not create something in there that's going to create a better mental like playground in there? And you know, part of that comes with accepting who you are. You know, we have affirmations all over the the mirror to remind ourselves things. And then in the morning, first thing in the morning, I have like recorded affirmations that I play out. They're like seven minutes long, and I go in the backyard. For me, movement works, and I'll play it with like data beats in the background. And I'm saying it back, and, and I look like a retard in the backyard as I'm saying, "I am healthy, wealthy, and wise." Yeah, yeah, yeah. But those are things for myself that I can get ingrained because continually, day in and day out, for who knows how many years, I was saying, why don't you look better? Why are you so stupid? Why this? Why that? You know, you, remember, the more productive the question that you ask yourself, the more productive the answer. So, um, does that help? Yeah. Anything you guys want to add? Uh, I use visualization a lot in 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 uh, you know a lot of aspects of my life, and that's been worked very well for me, especially working out. Um, you know, I, I've told this story before, but you know, every every goal that I've ever hit, 300, 400, 500 pound bench, you know, it's taken place I, hundreds of times in my mind before I did it, yeah. and uh, that's a you know it's a very powerful tool if used correctly. Yeah. Yeah, and Brett, Brett, you would say you do the same thing when you're doing the powerlifting stuff now, right? You envision everything before. Oh yeah, you. I mean, I, I do it the best. I do the best I can with it. You know, it's something that that again um, takes a, a lot of practice um, to be able to do it right. You can't just say, okay, I'm going to sort of. You right. really have to learn how to do it. It's a skill. It's an important skill. Um, but as you do it more and more, you become it becomes more easily. The pictures become more easily. Um, uh, you know, you, you can see it better. I mean, you really, you know, sometimes I can, I can see myself doing things. Um, sometimes I can see myself doing things in color. So there's a difference. Right. Um, you know, you really have to be engaged, and it does take a lot of practice to do it. Um, but uh, I think it's, it's, it's critical because it does, it absolutely 100% work. Yeah. Do, you guys, do you guys ever have it where, because I've, I've had it where I've done some visualization, and I've actually felt like you know the feeling that you feel when you've accomplished that and and you have like this rush come through you. Oh yeah, you I can get that. I can... Like, you feel like you've yeah. actually done it, and it's so much yeah. more intense. 
Yeah, I can. I can get the. Sometimes I can do it really, really well. Like if I'm preparing to do something, and I can actually feel the hair standing up on the back of my. Yeah, yeah. Of my neck. that's yeah. such an yeah. awesome feeling. But like sometimes, like I, it's, it's not often. It's, it's sometimes I can do that. You well, know? Brett, do you ever, do you ever get the same? Do you ever get that feeling too? Like when you're riding your bike, you know, at, at you know speeds yeah. I won't even hear on this uh, video. No, uh, no. I, you know what? That's that's sort of a different. Um, that's a different thing with me. Um, that is. Um, uh, I'm not going to call it a, you know, sort of a gut check, but I will tell you that um, I, 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 I really love that feeling. Not because it doesn't make me, um, it doesn't make my heart rate. It actually, probably, I would say that if anything, it probably um, makes me. I would say that it probably sort of um, gets me very, very focused. So I like, I like taking the bike to work in the morning. Because it sort of is like a primer for the day. Yeah, it's um, like your meditation. That is it? like your meditation. I like that. Yeah, it's not like a, you know, I don't know how it looks from an outsider. I suspect probably not the safest thing in the world. Um, but um, to it's me, your focus. Your focus. You just look like a badass with no it's, shirt it, and your scrubs. Yeah, it, I get it. it yeah. I get it's it. just, it's just, um, it's just a, a time of. Um, it's it's it, you know like Ray says you know Ray says that's that's your church right yeah. that's your my answer I mean you know it's mindfulness you're you know you're yeah. in your zone I mean that's what it is with me you yeah. know because I I will tell you um you know for better or for worse and I do understand the guys with the wing suits and things like that that would be me if I didn't have kids okay no question about it I'd be doing it. I'd be one of those Red Bull guys but no question but um you know I I I do get that because if you talk to those guys. Um, and, uh, um, you know, my friend's, a uh, very close friend of mine, he's a, he's a spine surgeon, um, his wife's aunt, um, his wife's uh, first cousin has the world's record for, for base jumps, M males and females, the world's record, okay? She's a Brazilian girl, look her up. Her name, first name is Marta. Anyway, um, if you ask him, she hasn't, she hasn't been over here because I'm always badgering him, when's Marta coming? I want to meet her, I want to meet her, I want to meet her, because she's done, you know, 5,000 base jumps. Anyway, lost a couple of husbands, anyway. Um, <laughs> He's, he says that if you talk to her, okay, this is the calmest woman in the world. And, you know, it's probably the exact same thing when she jumps because I've seen her interviewed on TV. She's very, very – not that I'm calm, but I can tell you that the, 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 um, the focus, um, you know, that she has so that she doesn't die – um, I can sort of appreciate, um, and it's either a, you're either go, you're going to kill yourself by virtue of the fact that you're a, a wild maniac, and the same thing goes for surgery when things are going wrong, bleeding. That's not the time to panic. Yeah. I would say that that if if you can describe it um, as anything, I would say that that is probably the time of um, extreme sort of focus and sort of you get into that zone. There's not a lot of other things in this life that 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 really do that to me. You know, I got to tell you. Um, so. That's one of the reasons why I like it. You sort of can't explain it to somebody, but that's that's really what it is for me. Right. Um, right. Do you ever feel that, Jim? Do you ever feel like that when when you when you're visualizing that you actually feel yourself doing it before? Yeah. So it, it's an you know it's something that I've built for I don't know how long since I started lifting, and um, so I'm very conditioned at it. And part of it, part of the way to make that really work is filling in the details. You know, the smell, the feel of the bar your body, the physiological response that you're going to get when you pick up the weight, everything. And the more detailed that you make that, the more real it becomes and, and the more effective a tool that is. So, yeah, I can feel, you know, everything from, you know, the pain when you first pick up whatever and, and uh, you know, the muscle burning, everything all the way to you know, the finish line. And um, that, that goes with everything. I mean, you know, no matter what I'm visualizing, I try to finish – you know, from beginning to end in as most detail as possible. And so, yeah, I feel that. You, you know what, what do you guys think about, and I just, this just came to mind, what do you guys think about when people have a goal, whatever it is, like say a woman, right? Um, she wants to fit in a certain, like, bathing suit and, and maybe putting that up and, and looking at that and visualizing herself in that. I mean, are you guys proponents of that? Is that something that you would recommend to do? For people that are looking to perhaps get into better shape or or come down to dress sizes or something to that extent. Yeah, I mean, I think that that's – go ahead, Jim. Uh, yeah, absolutely. You ha you have to believe it first, and that helps. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Go ahead, Jim. Go ahead, Brett. No, I was just going to say that. I mean, it doesn't really matter. I, I get what you're saying, Monica, about not trying to fit into somebody. You're not comparing yourself, but at least you can have um, – you may have to have some sort of um, um, barometer – Right. Uh, um, right. You know, something to look forward to. There has to be some sort of goal set in your mind. And a lot of these people um, who have those 
I'll, I'll, I'll call it sort of the, the, the weak-mindedness in the beginning. Um, they need something to sort of... Uh, uh, stimulate? Yeah, to stimulate them or to, to drive them, to motivate them. So they have to have some sort of goal if they can't picture themselves, right. themselves wearing that bikini or whatever it is. So right. um, I do get that. It's like writing, you know, like my friend Tony, you know, who, who is um, in the powerlifting meet. I mean, right. I'm sure, Jim, you know, you, you, you powerlifted before, probably have your, your goals sitting right on your on your mirror there. So it's the first thing you see in the morning. Or maybe you don't. Maybe you have in your car. I don't know. But um, uh, a lot of people do that. Um, right. and, you know, they, and they may or may not be able to um, envision themselves do it, but it's 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 it, or in a bikini or lifting that weight. But it takes practice. It takes practice. It, it's the exact same pathways, and this has been demonstrated many many times. Um, you know, they use uh, magnetoencephalography, electroencephalography. Um, you know, there there are similar patterns in the brain whether you're actually doing something with your muscles or you're actually doing it and thinking about it. You know, like you said, Jim. You know, you 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 smell it. You you know, you 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 feel it. Um, everything in 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 uh, in unbelievable um, uh, detail. And it's the same exact thing. You know, they've done fMRI, all sorts of things. There's plenty of data to show that. Um, so um, whether it, whether it's you, okay, um, initially, or it's somebody else, there's got to be some sort of um, you know goal um, that you're reaching, you know, uh, towards, and ultimately that picture will come down, and um, you know you won't need a picture anymore. You'll be able to just um, envision yourself doing it, you know. So, um, uh, you know, that's really my thought. But it's a power. It's a very very powerful tool. Very yeah, I mean, like all all the mindset coaches around the world, you know, I don't care what quality or what level of any of them you work with, they all teach mirror exercising. Or exercises, you know, which is the what is it called when you mirror? What's that called? What's the yeah, word mirror. Well, but there's a word for it, modeling, modeling. But you know, the truth is, is that we're taught in our society, unfortunately, today, in a lot of ways, that um, you know, love of self, glorification of self, um, is not is not something that is acceptable, quote unquote, socially in public. And a lot of people, myself included, really, really struggle with like accepting, um, you know. Who you are, you know, compliments, your greatness, your, you know, your internal you, all these different things. If I got, go down the whole Freud pathway, but, but the truth is, is that by doing these, you know, modeling exercises, these mirror exercises, and talking to yourself and telling yourself exactly what you, you know, want your body and your mind to hear, you know, you're, you know, we could get into the whole, you know, the 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 the, the id and the ego and the subconscious and and, and your unconscious, but. But the reality is, is that you do believe it the more you start visualizing it. And, and the more you do these exercises, you know, like Brett, you said, you know, Tony wakes up and he sees his weight, you know, it does become a part of you. And there is something to be said about, like, you know, really that modelization or that modeling of that goal and doing it every single day and reminding yourself everywhere you go with the purpose of a mirror to do that. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I, one thing that I've realized for me that works is – when I visualize, if I'm in movement, and I've had this conversation with you guys before, like for me, anything like retaining, when I'm in movement, it works so much better for me. So if I'm, I used to, back in the day, I would, when I was uh, attempting to memorize scripts or whatever, whatever it was, I would be on the Stairmaster or the treadmill, and I would literally hold on, and I would picture myself, whatever it is that I wanted to accomplish, I would picture myself I was doing that, and I would, just like you guys said, feel, feel it, um, hear it. I would, all these different things would go through my mind, and it just worked for me, and I think it's important for anybody who's who's listening to this or watching it is to like see how do you retain information better, how do you function better, and then play off of that because the way I work, I mean, Jay will freaking read a page and he remembers it for life. I have to read it 20 times before I actually even remember it. I can never ever be like this guy, like a computer. So I'm not going to do things the way he does it. I'm going to do things that work for me, which is I've got to be in movement, I got to look like a retard in the backyard jumping up and down and flailing my arms around. Well, everyone learns differently. Everyone's processes information differently. Whatever works for you is what works for you. Okay. Next topic is we got a couple, um, and and again, guys, for those of you guys watching, we got like five to six people that are in and out watching live. If you want to ask a question for any of us, just go over to the right column and just type in your question. Please submit any type of question: anti-aging, regenerative medicine, fitness, fat loss, whatever. Go ahead and send us a question. Um, so the last topic. Well, there's two more topics actually, is um, and we'll save the last one. The what will sore attendees receive for last? But um, the the whole and this is I struggle with this. So I'll start off with this. But um, enjoying the process, um, you know, progress, not perfection. You know, 
this this is a hard this is tough for me because of my upbringing but I think a lot of people as I you know go out into the world and I interact with more and more people now because of this show and because of my relationship with obviously Jim and Dr. Brett and all the people that we get to meet now in the world you know I see this I see a lot more guys that have this problem than women do and I think it's because of male culture or just the way our dads were but um you know, if you had a really driving parent, you know, and again, I'm, I'm liking this to myself and, and my father, but, you know, a lot of, I see this in a lot of guys, um, and they were pushing you as a child to be better, you know, to achieve more, to be a better student, to be a better athlete, whatever it was. Um, guys like us and guys like that struggle to really enjoy the moment and to, like, embrace your success or, you know, celebrate, as Monica always says, like, you know, your achievement. And one of the toughest things in life, I think, for me specifically, and a lot of guys like this that I know, um, is like really sitting back and being like, you know what, man, I can be happy right now. You know, I don't have to worry about what's coming next or when the next, you know, event is or when the next, you know, goal that I have set for myself has to come, you know, or, or, or uh, that I get to. And that it's just, it really is like they say, you know, stop and smell the coffee or, you know, or smell the roses or whatever. I mean, that is so key in life to be able to actually just like sit back, you know, as Monica always says, and say, mm, and just, uh, well, you know what I mean, <laughs> just literally like embrace that moment. And, and especially if it's a success, if you've had a good day at your office or at your work or Brett, you know, you just saved, you know, a, a guy from death, you know, the, the, to, to, to understand that what you just did is like a massive benefit, not just for yourself, but for society, like that's, that's important, and I don't think a lot of us, I know myself, like, I, I don't celebrate that. You know, Monica's constantly, Jim knows this, you know this, but I'm constantly just driving myself to achieve more and do more. And while that's good, the, the truth is, is, like, doing that all the time is just going to lead you to, like, you know, not be your best. And, and if anything, like, you know, have, you know, breakdowns instead of, like, just being more at peace. Does that make sense? Yeah, it makes sense to me. Anything you guys want to add? Nice, Brett. Woo! Brett just figured out Google effects. <laughs> yeah, you know, I'm, 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 Go no, I, <laughs> yeah, I actually, I actually do that. Um, I actually do that a lot. Um, I, I haven't fiddled around with this Google thing. It's pretty cool. Yeah. So can everybody see this? Yes. Yeah, yeah that's awesome. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Um, anyway. You are late, uh, now, babe. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, um, it's it's very important, and I am I am as guilty as you, Jay, of of, of really not doing that. Right. Um, I'm 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 actually uh, quite bad. I'm I'm very very bad at um at um you know receiving compliments. I'm almost got my you know like if I you know just operated on somebody and you know we we saved the kid. I'm always just like okay you know they're thanking me and I'm my head's like on the floor. Right. You know um right. I I just am not I'm I'm very very bad at that. Um I mean I'm I'm terrible at it actually. I'm right. not very bad. I'm terrible. Right. Um right. and uh, I don't really I don't. I'm not going to say never, but it's it's very very rare where I actually sit back and just say, um, because my mind is not conditioned well enough um, to. Um, we'll work on that the next store event, Brett. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's it's, <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's a hard thing for me, and you know, and part of that I'm going to tell you, um, that also for better or for worse, probably for worse, um, has been uh, has been trained into me. Yes. Um, yes. It, I don't know, it, and it yes. and it has not by my parents because my parents are very 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 sort of a. Complimentary, smiley um, type of people, but it really got it really got beaten into me. Um, unfortunately, during um, you know during residency, right. because um, you know you would do something that was uh, that you thought um, was 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 miraculous. Save some kid in the middle of the night. You're operating by yourself. It's the first time, and you know it, not that it went unnoticed, but um, it, it didn't. Uh, it, 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 it wasn't well received, you know, when you were, you know, you know, or, you know, gleeful about what, you know, what, what just happened. I remember one time, and this is, this is, this is exactly what it was the seven years, you know, through my residency and my, um, my, my neurosurgery chairman was sort of this, uh, this maven neurosurgeon who, you know, published 250 papers, you know, was, was responsible for bringing computers into the, the operating room, et cetera, et cetera. So this, there was no impressing this guy, um, at all. Um, and I, I remember, um, one guy was, um, was uh, was dying. Um, he had a um, he had his head open the day before. Had a big epilepsy operation, and um, he was dying um, when I was making rounds. Well, actually, I wasn't even making rounds. I think I was in the call room um, talking to the residents. It was about five thirty in the morning, and um, we were about to start making rounds. 
Hi, McKenna. And um, uh, the guy was not, I, I was sort of summoned quickly by this guy who was an internist, and he said, Brett, you got to come over here and look at this guy. He's, he's in real trouble. So there were some signs that he was, he was getting very, very bad and, and going to die in two minutes. So um, we took the, uh, I, I got the resident to help me, and we took the staples out of the guy's head, and he, he was, you know, awake at this point. He didn't have a, a breathing tube in. And we opened up his head um, at the bedside and sucked out a huge clot. Okay, of blood. He was bleeding, and we took him down to the operating room, and we put him under anesthesia, and we and we saved him. But this is something that was just we basically did brain surgery at the bedside. Now I'm not talking about the hole. I'm talking about opened up his entire head. Okay, at the bedside, and I can't. I, I went down there and I I told my chairman. Um, I told my chairman. Um, hey, I'm not gonna mention any names. Hey, um, you know this is so cool. You know, doctor so and so. I mean, we just did this. And he, he looks at me. He goes like this. So you want credit for breathing? And he just walked wow. away. And, and that, you know, <laughs> that, that type of stuff, um, you know, scars you. I mean, wow. it, 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 it does. Um, so, you know, it, I, I think that these are things, um, you know, like I said, for the worse, um, that have been um, entrained. Because when I uh, when I think about all the, all the great things that these guys have done, um, mm -hmm. and these guys were, you know, as I had said, these sort of these, these giants in neurosurgery, um, you know, you, you know, you're like this. Right. You know, right. So you have to sort of find your way, and you have to get over that. I think, um, and you have to, um, you know, be at peace with what you do. Be happy. Take a look. You know, take take a step back sometimes, and you know, sort of smell the roses and right. um, realize that you're doing, you know, uh, you know, great things for for tons and tons of people. Um, I, I think that's important, um, and I'm um, I'm. I am really, 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 really bad at doing that. You know, and again, it also is a product, I think, of the fact that my mind is very, very active. So when I'm done with something, I'm going to the next thing, and I'm not even thinking about it. You and are very similar when it comes to that. How about you, Jim? Do you, do you notice that you have a challenge with that as Jim, well? Jim's just like that, too. I right? don't. I don't. I've, I've become a lot more, um, I don't know, in tune with it lately. Uh, but even as a kid, you know, I would do something big, and I would, I would uh, I'd take time out and kind of be in the moment a little bit. So... That's awesome. Yeah, yeah, that's good. You know what I noticed? What's what's awesome about Jim th that when we spent some time together in, in Vegas and, and did the whole body painting um, event, and I and I watched him and his wife interact. It's so cool because they are so in the moment with one another. And I think when you can incorporate that into any part of your life, whether it's relationships, whether it's your training, whether it's um, time on your own. It's so important to, to sit there and relish in that moment and to hear how they interacted with one another in that moment and how excited they were to have time with one another and they treated each other with so much respect, love, and adoration. Honestly, it was amazing to witness. And, and I think Monica's praying that one day I'll become like him. <laughs> <laughs> no, I absolutely love his intensity and his passion. No, but, and I, mean, I relish, I relish but, in the moments... Regardless, I always relish in the moments with him. I think he challenges, you know, he's challenged with it. But I'm just saying from an observation standpoint, when I was observing Jim and Rosie, and I was watching them interact with one another, and that was my first experience with them, I thought, how great is that for both of them, that they can actually be in that space and appreciate one another? Because think about it. We only have, we, we don't know when our last breath is going to yeah. be. Why not enjoy all the moments? And that's what I... Well, I mean, I mean, honestly, the truth is this, for simple, simply, and Brett, you are just like me, and that's why we drive each other crazy. But the reality, <laughs> the reality <laughs> is, is that until well, until you and I get better about celebrating the moment, we are going to have more stress than these people are, you know. And you're right, our brain does, you know, move it, you know, like you said, multi gigahertz rate. But 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 the problem is, is that. We have to. It, 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 it's in, it's conducive, or it's, it, it, you know, to us internalizing. We have to enjoy the moment. We cannot well, continue to move I, here's, beyond. Here's what I think. I think that part of it comes with, like he, you said initially, is acceptance. It's okay to have your brain going as fast. Because look, Brett, you wouldn't be as great at what you do if your brain didn't function the way it did. Jay would not be as good as what he does if his brain didn't function the way he did. All you got to do is carve out little chunks of time so you can just sit, okay, let me breathe and learn how to chill. That's it. I mean, it's really simple. There's nothing wrong with either one of you. Both of you are fantastically fucking awesome. And I will, you know, devour this man till I can have no more devourness. But, you know, there's nothing wrong with either one of you. And, right. and I think that as you start to understand that and just play around with what works for you and what makes you feel better, that's what you do. 
But there's nothing there's nothing to change, shift, or anything because you, you guys are both badasses. Well, Jim's a badass. Right, but I mean, I, I guess a last word. And Jim, Brad, we got a really, really awesome question from D. Gorley out there, and it's really, really good. And Ray just called me. He said he's going to dial up for a couple minutes here. But um, it's really about the small victories, okay? And no matter what you do in your life, <laughs> you know, we're not all neurological surgeons. That's for damn sure. But whatever, whatever you do, you know, learn. whenever you – whenever you – do something well, or even if not not yourself personally, but let's say you just help a guy out on the street. You, you see a person in a wheelchair, and you open a door for them to go into a public, you know, uh, place. Embrace that, man. Like, let that resonate with your body. Like, feel good about it. You know, like, literally be like, wow, you know, like, I could have it such worse. I could be so much worse off. You know, and just 30 seconds, 10 seconds, 15 seconds, whatever, but like, let that resonate, as Monica always says, through your body. And, you know, for guys like you and me, Brett, and all the other guys out there, because there's tons of us like us, um, that's going to make a huge difference. Man. Yeah. It really will. Yeah. It really will. Okay, let me – I want to celebrate your greatness. Brett, let me ask you this question. This is an amazing question. And, Jim, you can answer this too. Um, so, again, uh, D. Gorley, I, I'm sorry I don't know who you are because I don't recognize your handle. But um, So this is on Estradiol. Should this be proactively managed – to the 20 to 30 range regardless of total testosterone level or only managed in the face of excess E2 symptoms? Yeah. Go ahead, Brett. Um, so, so that's a good question. I, I t we've had conversations about this before, Jay, yep. about what, um, you know, what my practice paradigm is. I'm a little, I think, probably over-aggressive with it because I'm always, uh, you know, again, I, I, you have to practice, you know, this is not um, – um, you know, it's not bodybuilder talk. It's not whatever. Um, it's um, it's medical legal aspects of practice. So you have to be careful because I can deal with somebody who comes back and they say or calls the office and says, um, you know, I'm having some hot flashes or I'm you know I can't sleep because I'm a little feverish um, or you know I can't have sex with my wife because um, well whatever. Um, as opposed to somebody saying, you know. Um, you know, you didn't start me on any anastrozole, and, you know, 12 weeks have gone by. I sort of, eh, you know, my nipples haven't felt good. They haven't called the office because um, mm -hmm. sometimes they don't even way we advise them to. And, you know, now I'm starting to, that is a nightmare phone call. I don't ever want to hear it. It hasn't happened before. Um, so if, I'm, if somebody is adamant about um, not being on um, an aromatase inhibitor, and sometimes I'll just use zinc, okay, if they have, like as an example, they come to me and they say, you know, their total testosterone level is, uh, you know, it, it's not 100, okay, it's 400, okay, or whatever it is, and, they're, and their free is really low, and they're having all these classic symptoms when we put them on. Um, and their estradiol level um, is, uh, at that point, it's right on the edge, 20. Well, you know, they're probably going to go up just due to aromatization, okay, even if they're not fat, although a lot of these people have a lot of extra body weight who doesn't, body fat. Um, so I'd err on the side of just putting them on just a little bit, and you'd be surprised. Putting them on just 0.5 milligrams of anastrozole once a week, okay, works. It works fine. Some people literally lick a capsule of anastrozole, and they plummet their estrogen. Right. So, right. And, you know, I, I don't, and I'm like that. You know that. Yeah, I'm there, like that. Listen, there are, there are plenty of people that are like that, okay, and there are also plenty of people who go the other way. They need a full yep. milligram five days a week, right. okay? Because they're very, very, very sensitive, okay, to any, you know, bump in their estradiol level. So the question, the answer, to the, it's a good question, and the answer is, is that I usually will present it to the patient. I'll say, listen, this is where your estradiol level is. This is where your total T is. The majority of these people remember, it's not so much, if you're going to get started on testosterone by me, typically you're getting started on either 0.75 cc's or 1 cc, okay? Right. So... You know, it's not well. You know, I'm I'm sliding scaling this. You know, using a sliding scale on this stuff, and then I'm sort of calculating how much an all they should get based upon what I think. No, I don't do that. What I do is I do my usual. I will put them on, and then I'll check. And then, hey Ray, um, hey guys, sorry I'm late. No worries. And then I will and then I will check. Okay, if I'm a little concerned, if somebody's got a number of of uh, you know, as an example, uh, twenty. Okay, and I put them on a, a full CC. Um, and their total T, well, forget about their total T. They're on a full CC, right. okay? And they really don't want to have it because somebody told them, hey, you know, it's going to cause problems. I'm going to have some issues. I'm going to get high. I say, fine, no problem, but we're checking labs in this guy in six weeks. Right. I want to know. So you always err on the side of just 
I don't care what you do when you start. There's no right formula for everyone that's going to fit you know, across the board. It just doesn't work like that. The best thing that you can possibly do is if, and we do this in, in, in surgery, okay, if you don't know where you are on the spine, as an example, okay, you ask a question. How do you ask a question? Get an x-ray. Okay, same exact thing applies. You don't know what's going on. You're a little nervous. Hey, I'm concerned. You know, this guy's going to go through the roof. He's going to be 50 when he comes back. Right. Okay. And you know what? You just err on the side of getting labs in six weeks. There's no harm. So, so the answer then, so it's a good answer, by the way, and I hope uh, D. Gorley is listening. So the answer, you know, really what Brett's saying is, and, we, and we've talked about this in the other hangouts, you know, with Nelson and Dr. Krizzler on the last one. Uh, and Jim, you can jump in here in a second, but um, – there is no range, right? I mean, this 20 to 30, you know, hypothetical range where, quote unquote, guys are going to feel amazing, it, it's bullshit, right? Everyone's biochemically individual. As you know, Brett, there's guys that have, you know, 55, 50, 48 range, and they feel amazing. Yep. You know? And there's guys, there's guys that, like you said, that you soon, soon you get them below 15, they got zero sexual function. Yep. Um, and and they feel like shit. And as you know. Yep. When you first started working with me, um, you know, I had not single digits, but I think I was like 11 or 12, and that yep. sucks, you know, yep. for a lot of guys. So there is no magical range, D. Gorley. Um, it totally goes by how you feel. As Brett said, you know, close monitor, monitoring, you know, every six weeks, every three months, when you first start especially, to really see where you're at. Absolutely. That's the answer. Jim, did you want to add anything real quick there? No, I, I, I mean, if he's looking for a number, I mean, I guess it's somewhere between 20 and 40, but, you know, right. the, the real answer is you treat the symptoms. Yep, and, uh, and you, know, you, know, you know, if I can stress something, Jay, and I, I, wasn't, um, uh, I wasn't involved with the last one, okay, um, but I'm sure this, somebody must have said this, um, because I can tell you this from a tremendous experience, okay, when I get phone calls in my office on patients um, that are HRT patients, okay, Nine times out of ten, okay, it's about some symptom that is related to um, estradiol, okay, right. estradiol. Um, and I've learned, and I've made mistakes in, the, in you know, when I started this because I didn't get it. I just used to think, well, you just bring everybody's number down. Uh uh. Right. Okay. There is a very, very, very narrow window. Okay. Yep. Um, you can be really bad, and again, I'm just going to use the sexual thing. Okay, really, really bad when your number is. 30, okay, and you can be really, really bad when your number is um, 15, okay, so you are in there, okay, right in that window, and sometimes it actually takes me a little while to get somebody on the right dose of an astrazole, okay, like I said, I've gone to this once weekly dosing, right, right, some, some people are on every other day, um, we've actually compounded, um, we're getting compounded now, instead of using 0.5, which is sort of a standard dose, um, you know, we use 0.25, right. and we compound that, you know, every, and use that every other day, and they're good, okay? Um, but it's it's really, you have to be really, really careful with it and really, really just listen to the patient and be very, very attentive to, you know, to what uh, he's saying and try to fiddle out, you know, f figure out, okay, uh, based on trial and error, okay, where they're going to be the best. All right, so this guy, so by, by the way, great answers. Um, I think we should let Ray. I, I know, I'm going to let Ray. I was going to text Ray. Come on, Ray. 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 You. Okay. We now you're on mute. You're on mute, dude. <laughs> I can't unmute him. He's got to unmute so, himself. Sorry, guys. I like to mute it just in case you get noise. Just tell us about your celebrity ways these days, dude. Every time I go on Facebook now, I see you with another celebrity. My God, what's going on, dude? You know, and, I could I could give a whole lecture on getting a workout and good meals in while uh, you're having a busy schedule. But, uh, so, no, um, I just listened to what uh, Doc and Brett said. I mean, excuse me, Doc and uh, Jim said. There's not much more I can add to that. I mean, you know. Well, no, what's going on with we just you? want to know about your celebrity life, dude. We don't oh, know what's going on with me. Um, I literally have – I'm supposed to be at a party right now as we speak, and I told everybody they could wait. And, uh, you know, I can't say any names. I can't say any names because Jim, uh, Jim says I name drop. But uh, <clears throat> so uh, <laughs> I am uh, – on a serious note, you know, um, being on the road, guys, does take its toll on you, whether you're – you know, eating right, which I've been trying to do, drinking my shakes, um, you know, but just not, you know, I'm, I'm living a, a, the life of uh, Jay and, and Brett uh, through their eyes because I know for a fact uh, Doc gets about, you know, less sleep uh, than most. Um, yeah, and I know Jay's yeah, for sure. Good, but, uh, here's, here's one. Right now, just came across, okay? Um, I'm going to show you this. What is it? This is a classic, okay? 
I'm not going to show you a name, of course. Can you guys read that? This is my typical. This is my typical. Okay, literally, this just came across. Is that, his, is that his nipple? Is that his nipple? That's probably his ass. What? Read it. Okay, so you see that? So you, okay, this just came across. It says, "Doctor, it looks like I have another medical issue to handle." Um, I shot my test on Monday and noticed this today. The needle did drop before I shot. <laughs> I mean, that literally is what it said. I just read it off the text. Okay. So I wrote, I wrote, I wrote, I wrote this. Oh, there, on the ground? Dude, That's I what? don't know how you do it, bro. After that conversation with that guy yesterday. And he goes, I go, I drop where? On the ground? He goes, yes. <laughs> that is awesome. And then he writes, oh, he's hilarious. I know, I'm an idiot. Uh, <laughs> all right, one more one more question, and then uh, we'll let everybody like face some final says for um for sore. But Brett, same guy, really good question. Be definitely interested in everybody's answer. I'm pretty sure we're all on the same page. But he says some TRT clinics are hesitant to administer tests via subcutaneous injection versus the more standard IM injections intramuscular. Yep. Yep. Your yep. thoughts concerning the efficacy yep. the efficacy of injecting into fat versus muscle, Brett? Your yep. Yep, yep, yep. So anyway, um, you know, you guys may have some other, um, you know, some other thoughts, okay, because I know that, that this was sort of the paradigm um, before I was in the picture. I can only tell you this. Um, I know that um, people do it, okay. Bioavailability, I am unsure of. I haven't seen any studies. What I can tell you, okay, you may or may not have experienced this, um, is that if you inject too superficially, and I'm not talking about everybody, okay, there is the chance, okay, that you're going to develop a really, really nasty um, chemical cellulitis from the oil. Okay, right. How do I know? Done it. Okay. Absolutely true. Done it. Okay. Other than that, bioavailability-wise, unsure. You guys may have some data. I don't. I've never really, you know, mined the data because it's not something that I typically recommend. There's, do. Okay. I did it on accident. Okay. There's two studies. There's two studies, and that's it. And they're both with transgenders. And the only the only thing that comes out of the studies is that they can use a lower dose. They say it's just as effective. But I'm with you. I say this to every guy, Brett. Jim, I know, says the same thing. The leaner you are, the more likely you're going to have cellulitis. You're going to have red bumps, a rash, something yep. Yep. that you're not. And every guy, and we all have heard this story too, every guy that's done it says, you know what? It burns so goddamn bad. I don't want to do that ever again. Yeah. You know, um, so jury's out. There are other people out there that love it. You know, Dr. Eugene Shippen, Brett, that's his whole practice. He's got every guy in his whole practice doing it, you know, in a sub Q. But, you know, Jim, you got a take on it? Yeah, we talked about this a long time ago with peptides too. Remember, um, as far as injecting any anything subcutaneous versus IM, uh, I, I personally experienced uh, cellulitis on with with peptides. Um, real bad experience with the test. I, I, that's why I do everything IM. And plus, I, I want you know I use um, kind of a more injection frequency than than most people do, and so uh, I, I want to make sure that I have a consistent release or a consistent time that's in a um, body part with with uh, consistent blood flow right so yeah. I, I'm just I'm not a, I'm not a fan yeah so I mean yeah I, so, I, mean, I mean but Brett there are a couple studies there's literally like two and they are with transgender um, transgenders and there's like you said there's no real data I mean it just you know they say that you can use milligram per milligram a little bit less sub Q and again I, I go by you know Shippen's practice that's all he does so it's definitely out there um, I think the answer is you got to experiment on yourself you know um, I, I also kind of have a pet theory that if you're a higher body fat person it's probably going to work a little bit better than if you're a leaner person because the leaner person is going to experience that pain or that rash feeling more than the higher fat person but that's just a pet theory I have nothing to go by that I, I agree Thanks, Monica. All right, guys, we're at, we're at like 5:03. Um, anybody, everybody gets a final say. Um, I'll just I'll just say that again. Two weeks from today, everyone is flying into Florida. Um, Sora is technically launching the next day on February 4th, which is Thursday. It runs through Saturday night. We still really do no BS, no marketing hype. We have two positions still left of our our total goal of uh, wanting 20 people there. We're gonna have a lot more people there that are locals. <laughs> uh, but actual patients of Dr. Osborne's and coming to see us, uh, we still have two slots left. So if you're considering, if you're a local to South Florida, 
there's no better opportunity than something like this. It's as we've been saying for almost eight or nine months now. There are there is no other seminar like this that we know of anywhere in the world. So again, if you're thinking about it, reach out to me, reach out to Dr. Osborne, reach out to any of us, and uh, we'll get you enrolled. Yeah, ladies and gents, if we speak about this constantly. We speak about knowing your body, about learning how to be your own doctor more than anything else, so you know what's going on. This seminar. That what that's what we're teaching. We're teaching how to get to the body, how to train, how to have a strong mindset. All these things, all into one seminar. It's fantastic. Yep. All right, guys. Final words. Uh, looking forward to working with everybody. It's going to be a great time, and uh, I know that you're going to come away with a lot of valuable tools. And Rosie's coming too, right? Rosie's coming. Yeah. Yep. All right. That's awesome. awesome. Where did where did Ray go? I have no Adam, idea. He wants, he wants you to speak first. <laughs> yeah, there he is. Two cents. Give us your two cents on what you're doing for everybody at SOAR. Let me tell you something. It's been 45, 50 degrees here in the morning, so everybody that's listening, get ready to get cold and wet. Yeah, yeah. Right, right? Got my Under Armour just for he's it. He's, say it. he's just sort of sitting there smug, with a smug smile. No, it's going to be a fun time, guys. Everybody's going to learn a lot. And um, it, it's uh, it's uh, e even last year when we sort of beta tested the idea, um, everybody walked away with a very, very, um, you know, sort of positive outlook and, um, you know, really having learned, um, you know, a lot. This year, this year it's much more structured, much more organized. Um, it's no longer a beta test. We are officially live. And I, I, I anticipate it being extremely, extremely well received. So, um, if you haven't signed up and, and um, you know, uh, you want to, as Jay said, there's just a couple left, um, you know, get a move on, and uh, um, we're happy to uh, um, bring you forward and make you part of the team. Um, i got to run, guys. i got to call antibiotics in for this guy. All right, brother. Take... Good luck. <laughs> I'll talk Thank to you guys. tomorrow. Thanks. Anything, Cash? Anything you want to say, Ray? Hey, guys. I'm looking forward to seeing everybody. You know, you're going to get educated, and you're going to get motivated. You're going to be cold. And we're gonna have some fun. Are you, Can't wait, dude. Are you are you a little under the weather? Or are you just been yelling? Um, <laughs> I'm a little under the weather. <laughs> maybe, maybe a couple non-protein drinks. Wealthy and wise, healthy, wealthy and wise. <laughs> I'm just trying to represent sore in the best manner I can. Out <laughs> yeah. I mean, the best way is being you, fabulous you. All right, man. All right, guys. Well, listen, dude, Bray, Ray. I think I appreciate you calling up at the last minute here. It's awesome. Yeah, yeah, thanks for joining us again. Yep. And, uh, I think we're probably <laughs> gonna have a meeting in the next couple of days to discuss some uh, more tactical stuff before we all get there. But uh, other than that, have a good night, guys. Bye, guys. Bye. Thank you. See you guys. Bye. Ciao. Dude, what's up, dude?